Uh, somebody heard like, like me, that's me. Houston may have a problem. Uh, put your thinking cap on, and, and I want you to think to be able. I, I have struggled with this, what we're get, fixing to get into. I, I got to tell you, I have struggled for, I don't know, years, I guess. I think I understand because it's hard for me to put on a Jewish hat. But that's what we got to do this morning. We got to put on a Jewish hat and look at it through their eyes, through the eyes of Paul, where we better understand. Uh, but I want you to really think about what we're going to talk about and... and and uh, any comments you have, I, I would love to hear them. You may straighten me out on what I think the Bible teaching it, is teaching us. So we'll get there in just a second. Uh, first of all, Joanne Chambers is, I believe she is still in ICU. The reason I say that, she's in, she's in real bad health. And she is in ICU, so we need to remember her in our prayers. She's very, a very sick lady. Uh, Don Smith, a former member of Westside, uh, passed away. His services were Saturday. Keep that family in your prayers. And, of course, Don Hayden, they're in New Jersey. Her mother passed away, and her funeral was last Friday. Uh, Aline Barrett, this is uh, Terry's mom. She was in the hospital, and now she's in room 112 at Heritage Oaks East. Aline Barrett is in room 112 of Heritage Oaks East. That's what I call it. That's how I keep my head straight on which one. Uh, in need of your prayers. Paul Ross is going to have cataract surgery on his eye uh, this Tuesday. So we need to remember him in our prayers. And, and of course, we need to continue to remember Wanda Horner and Shirley Wardlaw and Lanny Powers, Juanita McCurry, Jerry Cockerham, Megan Gould, Caleb Ivey, and Alton Albert, Patty Williams, Leo Brooks, my son, Jeff Cook, he, he's progressing. He's still kind of young, <laughs> and he's healing up. He wants a coconut cream pie from his mother, so I know he's doing better. It's good to see everybody. Boy, we had to spring forward, didn't we? Let's have a word of prayer. Our most gracious, loving, and all-powerful Heavenly Father. Lord, we are so thankful that we are here to worship you as a family of yours. And Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your love that you have for us. And Heavenly Father, help us to love each other, support each other, and to build each other up. Heavenly Father, we pray for Joanne Chambers. We pray for her good health to return. We pray for Don Smith's family. And Heavenly Father, we pray for Don Hayden and that family, the passing of her mother. We pray for Eileen Barrett. We pray for her continued health to improve. 
We pray for Terry as he takes care of his mother. Lord, we pray also for Paul Ross. We ask that you be with his doctors and nurses. Give them wisdom and understanding and help them perform their skills. Lord, we remember Wanda Horner and Shirley Wardlaw and Lanny Powers, Juanita McCurry, Jerry Cockerham, Megan Cool, Caleb Ivey, and Alton Albert, Patty Williams, Leo Brooks, and Jeff Cook. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for our good health that we have. We're thankful for each day of our lives that you bless us with. Lord, we pray for this congregation. We pray this morning as we study your word, we'll, we'll understand and apply the things we learn to our life each day. We're thankful for our elders as they shepherd us here. We're thankful for their knowledge. And Lord, help us to love them and support them. We pray for our deacons and the hard work they do. And we pray for each and every member of this congregation. Help us to study your word each day. Help us to live our life where others will see Jesus in our life. Thank you so much for Jesus who shed his blood on the cross for us. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Acts chapter 21, you remember verse 18, uh, he has, came, Paul has come to Jerusalem. He is at Jerusalem. And he goes in to see the, the, the elders, the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And, and the 18, the following day, Paul went in with us to James and all the elders were present. So he's talking to them. This is not James, the one of the apostles. James, the brother of John, was killed in Acts 12, verse 2. Uh, very little is known about uh, James, the son of Alphaeus. So this is James, the brother of the Lord. He's prominent in the church of Jerusalem. He was a witness to a risen Savior, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 7. So in verse 19, after he had greeted them, he began to relate to them, or relate one by one, the things which God had done among them, among the Gentiles through his ministry. So he's telling them everything that took place on all his missionary journeys, and he's telling them what God had done through him, how God had used him as his instrument to spread the gospel and convert Gentiles and Jews to Christianity. He took them step by step. And so in verse 20 says, And when they heard it, they began glorifying God, and they said to him, See, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews who have believed. Thousands of Jews had become Christians. Now in verse, uh, I, said, I don't know how I'm going to do this. How, I'm, uh, how I want to start. Uh, uh, let's go on. The, uh, I'm sorry. We're in Acts 21. Acts, Acts 21. And uh, verse number 19. Verse 19. I believe that's where I was. Verse 19. Let me go back. Yeah, uh, verse 20, he glorifying God. And verse 21, and they have been told about you and you're teaching all the Jews among the Gentiles. I'm, that, that's where I am in verse 21. Uh, if you back up a little, he tells them also in ver the verse 20, they're, they're uh, zealous for the law. These are Jewish Christians 
They all believed in the Messiah. They all believed in Jesus Christ. But many of them didn't understand that the old covenant had passed away, that it had been nailed to the cross. Uh, they still observed circumcision as a requirement. They, they uh, were or days and months, uh, feasts, celebrations, all of these festivals. They still came, kept up with these rituals, these uh, forms of Judaism, and uh, it took a direct action upon Peter to con even to convince him. He was an apostle, and he had to be convinced to accept the Gentiles as Christians. How would that happen? Cornelius, yeah, Cornelius uh, in Acts chapter 10. And so then it took a great meeting they had in Jerusalem. Paul and Barnabas goes to the Jerusalem church, and he is confronting them and telling them that God is now accepting Gentiles. It had been 10 years before Gentiles were accepted into the church. It had been 10 years. And so they're at the Jerusalem church previously, and they have a council, they have a meeting, not to, de uh, not to decide, not for them to decide, not even for Paul to decide. But Paul went there to tell them what? The truth of God's Word, that both Jew and Gentile are now can be in one body, the church. And so he's telling them, this is what God says. And so he convinces them, or he, they understand what the truth of God's Word is, but they had some, uh, some things they wanted to make sure with Paul that, that Gentiles did. Don't drink blood. Remember that? Uh, don't worship idols. Uh, other than that, that's, that's really the main requirement, the, the main things that they gave Paul. But they still kept up with... Uh, some of those things, some of those forms of Judaism, it was hard for them to understand. It was uh, for countless centuries they had worshipped God. They had been his chosen people. And so God clearly taught that the old law was not binding on Christians, whether they were Jew or Gentile. But they were slow to learn, the Jews were. And you kind of understand for centuries, they had done certain things, certain ways. They had observed feasts. They had performed circumcision. They were God's chosen people. And this is the way it has been for centuries. And now, all of a sudden, it changes. Yes, sir. We're going to get to the impact of this in a second. Yes, they did. Jesus taught over in John chapter 10, verse 16. It says, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock with one shepherd. Amen. If they had really, they, the, their the problem was they were looking for a physical king, just like the greatness of King Solomon. They were looking for a physical kingdom, like the greatness of Solomon. And they weren't thinking spiritual, were they, Darwin? If they had understood the prophets, they would have understood this. A spiritual kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Yes, sir. So incensed yeah. when Paul defected. Mm -hmm. Paul was their crusader. He, you know, he was leading the charge, the, the persecution. He was their guy. Yes, sir. For him to leave, change camps, and leave, their pride was so incensed that that just became a calling cry to get after Paul and whatever he's preaching. Yes, sir. And follow him all the way through. I mean, all of his writings are about that because those. 
Judaizing people, or uh, basically attacking Paul because he, he left their crusade. He left their yeah. effort. He dealt with it in Romans. He dealt with it in Galatians all the way through, didn't he? In the epistles, he had to address those things that uh, they hated him, didn't they? <laughs> they hated him. He was their turncoat. He was their traitor. I, I, I thought it being cold outside that I wouldn't have one of these deals I had. <clears throat> but I am. Yes, Helen? It is. That's right. That's a good point. Not a dime's worth of difference from then and today. You're exactly correct. Can we have that right in the church today? Sir? We have that in the church today. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Daryl. That's correct. Uh, let's go on. Yes, we have. Yeah. Uh, that, thank you for mentioning that. And they had a slower way of communicating. They didn't have a phone or all the stuff that we have where we transportation. Yeah. We go meetings and, you know, they yeah. just basically, as Paul went that round, yeah. and people carried the message out. Yeah. It, it was a lot slower there. Yeah. Thank you very much. I meant to mention that. They didn't have the written word. They had letters that Paul had written, and they were still putting them together. And Paul, and when I mentioned the prophet prophesied this, Isaiah 56, 8. Yes, sir. Isaiah 56, 8. You want to read that? The Lord Jehovah, who gathered the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him besides his own that are gathered. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right. Now that we kind of discussed that a little bit, let's go on. <clears throat> Verse 21 and 22. Oh, I might, I, I might also, one thing we hadn't talked about. Paul even continued to observe some things under the old law but it, he never compromised if I can if, if that makes sense <coughs> he never compromised it was, th it was small things it was out of habit uh, it did no good and he knew that Paul knew the truth of God's will he knew that nothing in the old law was binding anymore he knew that but if you remember, he circumcised Timothy so that Timothy, he was, his father was a Greek, his mother was a Jew. He had been brought up as a Jew, but he, he had not been circumcised, and so they circ he circumcised him so he'd be able to talk and teach and preach among the Jews. Uh, Titus, he, didn't, he did not do that too. He did not circumcised Titus because of Judaizing teachers if he would have circumcised Titus then he would have been showing them that you needed to be circumcised so you see the difference there on, on them two and, and there's going to be some other things he never well let's go on verse 21 and 22 he never sacrificed principle for the truth of God's word <clears throat> verse 21 and 22 here's what they told Paul the Jerusalem leaders of the church and they have been told about you they have been told about you that you are teaching all of the Jews who are among the Gentiles not in Jerusalem who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses uh, telling them not to walk according to the customs what then is to be done 
What is to be done? <laughs> that's what they're asking themselves, and that's what they're asking Paul. And so now they are making a suggestion to him. They will certainly hear that you have come. I know it, some of this sounds ridiculous to us if we keep our Gentile hat on. But when we put our Jewish hat on to try to understand, this is serious business to them. This is serious. And Jewish Christians, it was uh, in Jerusalem, had heard that Paul had done all of these things. Forsake Moses. Uh, do not circumcise. All of these things. He's been teaching according to the truth. Don't observe circumcision. Don't walk according to the customs. And all of these things are going to take them some time. They're going to have to... You know when that stops? It was God's way. He destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. There wasn't no temple no more to go to to offer sacrifices. Life has changed once, the, once in 70 A.D. when, that, when the, the, the temple and the Jewish priests and all this was gone. And so now let's go to verse 23. Therefore, in verse 23, he says, Do this that we tell you. They want him to do this. There are four Jews. I believe they're Jewish Christians. They may not be. We don't know for sure. They had taken a Nazarite vow in, Num in Numbers chapter 6. A Nazarite vow. This vow had to be... Uh, kept for a certain period of time whatever it was determined and it was terminated by the shaving of their head and they advised Paul here's what we want you to do we want you to associate with them take go with them or, or uh, to the temple verse 24 it, they told him to take them and and purify yourself they want him to be purified too along with them we want you to pay their expenses. We want you to pay their expenses. I don't know what for, for the shaving of the head and to purchase a sacrifice, an animal to be sacrificed for them, each one of them. Uh, and they advise Paul to do these things. Uh, pay their expenses so they can shave their heads and all this. Then all the, Jeru all the Jewish Christians or all of the Jews in Jerusalem will know that all these rumors about Paul are not true. That you walk orderly and that you keep the law. Do you see that? Remember the, the how do you say that word if you're a, a fanatic? The fanaticism, is that how you say that? Fanaticism of the the Jews, and you talk about, this was serious business. You talk about people that were dedicated and committed. They were God's chosen people, did certain things, certain ways, months and years and feasts and all these things. And so here they're asking him to do these things. Jewish Christians are going to take some time to be emancipated from Judaism. Um, so let's go on, and I'm going to ask some questions. Paul complied with this. I think he did it for peace and unity. He knew it would take some time. He, to me, is showing respect for their weaknesses that they have. The same thing is talked about in, in the book of Galatians. The same thing is talked about in Romans 14. You remember eating a meat. Uh, don't be a stumbling block for those who think that you're eating meat that's been sacrificed to an idol. So if they think that, don't eat the meat. <laughs> it's all this for conscience sake. So let's go on and we'll come back. We'll, we'll talk about this. Verse 26, then they took, or then Paul took the men and the next day purifying himself along with them, he went into the temple giving notice of the purification period was over and each man, it, 
was sacrificed for each one, a sacrifice made for each one of those four men. Now, I know this is hard for us to understand. We're Gentiles. We see the wrong signal. We think, why is Paul doing this? What in the world? Why would he do this? But remember all the things that we talked about. Terry? Do you think this is the, the man's time of him doing this? Because I don't, it seems like that would be misleading. Um, I'm thinking that, that's him wanting to do this to get along. Yeah. Than what God really wants. Yeah. That's, that's what I want you to point out. That's the way I meant to say it. Uh, there... Was he compromising? Was he? Do you think he was compromising? Yeah. 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 You have to wonder that. You have to, yeah. All he had written uh -huh. about the law uh -huh. being done away with, uh -huh. why didn't he say, wait, guys, <laughs> you're following false belief, if, yeah. if that was the message. Yeah. There are a lot of preachers. Those, those people there were Christians. Yeah. They were Christians. Yeah. Even though they still believe the law. So yeah. So something to ponder yeah. and to think about. How could they do that and yet be yeah. Christians because Christianity is based upon the belief in Jesus Christ. By faith. By faith, not the works of the law. And Paul Paul knew that. Uh, remember, too, I'm coming to say, Paul knew that because Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He'd been a Jew forever. He knew the word. He knew he was the leader of the Jews. He knew what was right. He knew what Jesus Christ required. He wrote it out so many, many times. Yes, Terry? He probably realized that he eventually could convert some of them if he did this. Yeah. But not all of them. Mm -hmm. In a minute, we're going to see it didn't work. <laughs> we're going to see what he did. Well, we'll see what happens to him here in a minute. Uh, they want to kill him, and we'll get there in a minute. So, okay, Darren. This all started a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Right before Paul was this year journey. If you go back in the early part of Acts, when the birth of the church, the church wasn't but just a few days old, and you look at Stephen's sermon to the Jewish people, and you look at Acts chapter 6 and verse 14, uh, Stephen was talking to them, and, and, and they were said, the Jews said, For we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered unto us. Yeah. So they, they've been mad from the get-go. <laughs> they were, weren't they? They were looking for every excuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> um, what about when we become a Christian? Do we know everything? No. Sometimes it takes a while for us to completely understand, doesn't it? Doesn't it do that? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. You know, there. after you've been a Christian, say, I don't know, 10 years, you look back at your life and you go, 
man, did I do that? I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. I, I see now that that's not what you do. I understand, and, and then you change, don't you? And you, you mature by study. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that might have been the reason why he caused this to happen. Mm -hmm. So he would have to go up before the court. And uh -huh. and that's, ex and <laughs> that's exactly correct. In a minute, you know, he does these things. What Betty Jo has said, he did, he, he does these things. He, 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 he's trying to teach them the truth. And here pretty soon, they're going to form a mob we're going to look at. They're going to run him down the street. They're going to kill him for these things. And it gives him an opportunity to do what, Betty Jo? There you go. Preach the truth to him. He gets to tell him what happened to him. How his life changed. How he was a Jew. A Pharisee of Pharisees. He did certain things, certain ways, observed feasts and new moons and, and all that. But he's going to show them that he no longer does that. That you have freedom in Christ. That you have... You, it is now like... Was Abraham under the old law? The law of Moses? No, Abraham wasn't under the old law. And that he was under faith. And now we are under faith. I'm glad Betty Jo said that. That's where we need to be in this. And we'll see. And I forgot where I was. Uh... Verse 27. Now keep in mind, Paul knew all this. He knew the truth of God's word. He was, well, he was an apostle to Jesus Christ, selected by him. He knew this. He knew the truth. He knew all of that ended with the death of the cross. And these people were doing this out of just plain habit. It did absolutely no good. Verse 27. The Jews from Asia. Whoa. Think about that. The Jews from Asia. What town have we, did Paul stay for three years? It was in Asia. Ephesus. So these Jews, they, they know him. They're from Asia. And upon seeing him in the temple. Now get this. They just saw him go into the temple. Uh, well, well, we'll go on. He, he spent three years there. They know him well. He went to all those towns in Asia. He, he prayed with the Ephesian elders. They saw him in the temple, these Jews, and they seized him. And they began to stir up the mob, it says. These Jews had seen Paul. He's in company with a guy by the name of Tri Trophius. I wish Nancy was here. Trophius. Trophius. Trophimus. That's it. Trophimus. This Trophimus is a Greek, and, and they're going to accuse Paul of, of, him, of Paul taking him into the temple. But they don't have any proof. There is no proof whatsoever. They're just, they, they think he did that. Boy, and that made them hopping mad. He stirred them up against, uh, he stirs, they stir up the mob against Paul, verse 28, against our people, the Jews, verse 29. They suppose that he took that Greek into the temple. They didn't know 
if he did or he didn't. So they assumed or they accused Paul, like Darwin said, they, they've been after him since day one, since he became the traitor. And so they accused him of this. He had defiled the holy place. He polluted the temple that all the Jews believed. And, and under the new covenant, the temple is not here. This temple is nothing more than a building. Who makes up the temple today? All of us. Yeah. All of us. Verse 30, then all of the city was provoked. They rushed together at Paul. They dragged him out of the temple. They planned to kill him, verse 31. The Roman commander, he sees all this going on, all this commotion. He sees this mob. He sees this, this uproar going on. And he is the Roman commander. He's responsible for keeping the peace. So what does he do? Verse 32, at once he took along some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. Isn't that easy to picture in your mind? I can almost hear the metal clinking as they're running. They're running down there to stop this commotion, to stop this, see what's going on, what's causing all of this. So as soon as the Jews saw the Roman soldiers beating they were beating Paul, but as soon as they saw the Roman soldiers, what'd they do? They stopped. <laughs> they quit beating Paul. Wonder why. Huh? Yeah, because it's against the law, Roman law, and them Romans got swords and spears. They'll quell it. They'll stop the mob. <clears throat> So soon as they went there, they quit. And a Roman commander thought Paul was a criminal out of Egypt. We're going to look at that in a minute. And they ordered Paul bound with two chains, verse 33. Two chains. And they asked him who he was, what he had done. Verse 34. But among the crowd, some were shouting one thing. And some were shouting another thing. So what could the Roman commander understand? If David is out in front of them little football players of his, and he's hearing this group shout this and this group shout this, what can you hear? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you have to say, hold it one at a time. But the, he couldn't understand this. He hears all this, all this crowd is going back and forth and shouting one thing and another. So the commander can't determine what the facts are here. So they bring him to the barracks. Now you can picture this in your mind. They're having to carry him. He has two chains on him. So the crowd is trying to kill him and these soldiers are trying to get him back to the barracks, to their barracks. Verse 35. When they got to the stairs, when they got to the stairs, oh, I can see it happening, can't you? The soldiers were carrying him because the mob was shouting, verse 36, away with him. They're still after him, verse 37. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he may be at the top of the stairs, I don't know. And Paul says to the commander, may I say something to you? But he spoke, Paul did, to the commander in Greek. And the commander is surprised that he spoke to him in Greek. Now look in verse 38. Look what the commander says. Then you are not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a revolt. That's who we thought you were, you know. We thought you were this Egyptian. And so the commander immediately knew that Paul was not the Egyptian that led the revolt. And, he, and Paul explains who he is in verse 39. I am a Jew of Tarsus of Cilicia. And then he asked permission to speak to the mob. Betty Jo. He wants to speak to the mob. Verse 40. And when he had given him permission, 
Paul, I don't know where he's standing on the, what part of those stairs. I would think, man, he'd be up there by the door up at the top. That's where I'd want to be so they can't grab you and pull you down. And he motioned at them with his hand to get their attention until the multitude of people were quiet. And then when, when they got quiet, he spoke to them in what language? The Hebrew, the Hebrew language. Any questions or comments so far before we go to chapter 22? Because in chapter 22, we're going to see their, his speech. What he's going to tell them, he's going to preach to them. He makes all things work together for good to them that what? Love the Lord. He can work through anything that happens and make it come out for good. He can work every day through our life and make it come out for good. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it great to be a Christian? That we don't have to be afraid. We don't even have to worry about death. Thank you, Helen. I'm trying to think. I'm going to have you turn someplace in a second. Let's if you went to Galatians chapter 6 and you looked at verses 12 through 14, those people were demanding circumcision. And in verse 12, Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, in verse 12, he said, these kind of people want to make a good showing in the flesh so that they would not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. In, in verse 13, he says, those who are circumcised do not keep the law themselves. Nobody could. They want you to do so. They want you to be circumcised so that they can boast in the flesh. And then he says in verse 14, May it never be, Paul says, that I would boast except in the cross of Christ. And he says that he, he has been crucified from the world. And then if you went to Galatians 5, he tells us to walk in the Spirit and not in the law. And he reminds them that Abraham was not under the law, but the law of faith. And it was counted to him as what? Righteousness. I'm not, I'm not ready to quit yet. <laughs> I want you to go Galatians 3. And then we're going to come next, next Sunday. We'll be in chapter 22 where we'll hear him preach to those people and go completely through his life. Uh, look at Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 19. Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 19. The intent of the law. Why the law then, he says? It was added because of transgressions, having been ordained through angels by the agency of a mediator until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now a mediator is not for one party only, whereas God is only one. Back, move up to verse 22. But the scripture has shut up everyone under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. To verse 23. But before faith come, came, 
We were kept in custody under the law, being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed. Therefore, verse 24, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. Verse 25, but now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Verse 26, for you are all the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. But you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. Isn't that wonderful? That's a living hope we have, isn't it? Any final comment? Yes, sir. In our heart, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. You're exactly right. Anybody else? You've been a great class. And you've been to Jesus for the cleansing part. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood?